don't you find resemblances between this architecture and Taj Mahal? Well, you are right if you find this similar to the Taj Mahal. But can you tell me what this building is known as? And who built this? So now let us find out why this building looks so similar to the Taj Mahal that was built by Shah Jahan. This building that shares uncanny resemblance with the Taj Mahal is known as the Bibi Ka Magbara. Now who built Bibi Ka Magbara? Bibi Ka Magbara is also known as the Mini Taj. It is obvious why it is known as the Mini Taj because the resemblance between these two architectural pieces is way too obvious. And this Bibi Ka Magbara that is also known as Mini Taj was commissioned by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb ruled from 1658 to 1707 and Aurangzeb was the successor of the successful Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. And Bibi Ka Magbara was commissioned by Aurangzeb. But why was Bibi Ka Magbara constructed? This mausoleum was built in memory of the wife of Aurangzeb that was Dilraz Banu Begum. We have learned that Shah Jahan built the Taj Mahal in memory of his loving wife Mumtaz Mahal. And similarly, it was Aurangzeb who built the Bibika Magbara in memory of his wife Dilraz Banu Begum. Now you must be questioning why these two mausoleums or why these two constructions look so similar. With this, we now come to the point of today's discussion, that is the cross-fertilization of ideas that happened among the various rulers who were ruling during this period. Various architectures were uncanny resemblances of architectures made by other rulers. That is to say, various architectures looked very, very similar to other architectures and one such instance is the Bibika Magbara. The Bibika Magbara or the Mini Taj completely resembles the Taj Mahal that was built by Shah Jahan. Now let me ask you a question quickly before proceeding with our lesson. Which construction is also known as the Mini Taj? Is it the Bibika Magbara? Is it the Raja Rajeshwara Temple? Is it the Humayun's tomb or is it the Red Fort? Yes, you are right. It is the Bibi Ka Magbara that is also known as the Mini Taj. This Bibi Ka Magbara was made by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in memory of his wife Dilraz Banu Begum. Now with this, we have to understand that between the 8th and the 18th centuries, construction activities increased. This is a point that we have been trying to understand since the beginning of all our lessons on rulers and buildings. In fact, the time period we are considering in these lessons roughly covers from the 8th to the 18th centuries. And during this period in the medieval India, construction activities increased. So various kinds of temples, mosques, canals, monuments, mausoleums, minarets were built across the Indian subcontinent between this period. And in this period as well, we see ideas and traditions were shared across regions. Suppose you see something in the southern part of the Indian subcontinent and you see another very similar construction in the northern part of the subcontinent. With this lesson, you can understand why this happened because ideas and traditions were shared among the various regions. Various rulers were inspired by former rulers and they made very similar architectures and one such example is that of the Bibi Ka Magbara. Now this cross fertilization of ideas or this sharing of ideas that happened among the rulers between the 8th and the 18th centuries can be strongly felt in the Vijayanagar area. In the Vijayanagar area, the elephant stables of the rulers were strongly influenced by the style of architecture found in the adjoining sultanates of Bijapur and Golconda. On this map you can see the Vijayanagara Empire and this Vijayanagara Empire shared boundaries with Golconda and Bijapur. So the various elephant stables that were made 
in the Vijayanagara Empire were heavily influenced by those of Golconda and Bijapur and this testifies to the same idea that cross fertilization of ideas took place during this period. Now let us travel to the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh we come across a city by the name of Vrindavan that is located near Mathura. Now to understand more about Mathura try to remember the history of Hinduism. Mathura is considered the birthplace of Lord Krishna and in Mathura many temples are there that are devoted to Lord Krishna. But you will be surprised to know that these temples in Mathura that are devoted to Lord Krishna are also heavily influenced by the Mughal palaces in Fatehpur Sikri. So here as well you can witness a sharing of ideas among the temples that are present in Mathura and the Mughal palaces that you can find in Fatehpur Sikri. The city Fatehpur Sikri was the capital of the Mughal Emperor Akbar and for this reason he built a lot of palaces in Fatehpur Sikri. Now many of these buildings that can be found in Akbar's capital at Fatehpur Sikri also follow the architectural styles of Gujarat and Malwa. So previously we learned that the temples in Vrindavan were heavily influenced by the palaces in Fatehpur Sikri and in turn we got to know that these buildings in Fatehpur Sikri were also influenced by the architectural styles of Gujarat and Malwa. So can you see how ideas were shared among various regions, ideas as in ideas pertaining to architecture that were prevalent in Gujarat and Malwa had inspired the buildings in Fatehpur Sikri and these buildings, these palaces in Fatehpur Sikri were in turn inspiring the various temples that we can now find in Vrindavan. Now while we are discussing this, it is very important to also understand the religious dimension in mind. Now there wasn't a Hindu Muslim divide during this period. This is true secularism in spirit because the temples of Vrindavan are very very holy and pious to Hindus. But despite being very holy and pious to Hindus, these temples were influenced by the Mughal palaces that were made by Muslim emperors. So you can see how the spirit of secularism was at play during this period. So with this, we come to the crux of this lesson. We were trying to understand the cross fertilization of ideas. Now the Delhi Sultanate or the various dynasties that ruled under the Delhi Sultanate were very huge and powerful and at the same time the Mughal Empire was also huge and mighty. But despite being so powerful and so mighty they borrowed ideas from small regions. That is to say these large empires also gained ideas from smaller regions. With this happened a true cross fertilization of artistic forms and architectural styles and this cross fertilization of artistic forms and architectural styles could be witnessed in the buildings that we discussed just a while ago. The Mughal emperors as mighty as they were were very keen on adapting regional architectural styles to the construction of their own buildings. That is to say, they wanted to add a local and regional flavor, a local and regional test to the buildings that they were constructing. And one such regional architectural style that they were heavily influenced by was the Bangla Dome. What is the Bangla Dome? In the Indian state of West Bengal, many buildings were made and the roofs of these buildings roughly resembled thatched huts. These thatched hut buildings came to be known as the Bangla Dome 
and the Mughal rulers liked this Bangla dome architectural style to a great extent, which is why they implemented this Bangla dome or this architectural style on many of their own architectures. So this is also a true instance of cross fertilization of architectural styles cross fertilization of ideas among the large empires and the smaller and local regions. With this we come to an end of our discussion on rulers and buildings. In this series of lessons the time frame we were considering was from the 8th to the 18th century. We got to learn about a lot of architectures that were built during this period. Firstly, we talked about how these architectures were made strong. While discussing this, we talked about the trebiate or the corbel style, we talked about baulis, we talked about how these huge buildings were made with a proper superstructure. We also discussed how much of proper planning was required to make these buildings as strong as they are. And while discussing this, we also devoted our discussion to understanding how religious places that were made by the various rulers and kings were also important symbols of power. Because these religious places, that is, these temples and mosques were built by the sultans, the kings, the rulers as manifestations of their power, of their wealth. With that, we then came to the finesse of Mughal architectures. And while discussing the Mughal architectures, we zoomed in on the Taj Mahal and the Red Fort. We got to know that the Red Fort had two separate audience halls. We also learned how the Taj Mahal was built alongside the river Yamuna. And finally, we then began our discussion on the cross fertilization of ideas. And it is on account of this cross fertilization of ideas that we find resemblances among many architectural pieces in the Indian subcontinent. Firstly, we talked about the Bibika Makbara and how it resembles the Taj Mahal, which is why it is also known as the Mini Taj. We also talked about how rulers in the Vijayanagara Empire were influenced by various architectural styles in Golconda and Bijapur. And while discussing this, we also took into account how the Mughal rulers were inspired and influenced by the Bangla Dome that could be found in the architectures of West Bengal. So with this, we come to an end of our discussion on rulers and buildings, on rulers and how they built their buildings between the 8th and the 18th century. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.